Let's dig into how quickly this LLM landscape has been changing in recent years. So when you started off with building these kinds of quick chat solutions, what was the ecosystem like then? What were the LLMs like that you were leveraging for uh, your platform? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I remember uh, vividly, uh, you know, the summer of 2020, when um, somehow through uh, Twitter, um, some Y Combinator connections, I first heard about uh, GPT-3. So this new model that came out and there was a, you know, a very closed uh, beta and uh, you need to be very quick to be able to to sign up and get access to the model. and and Somehow I managed to be one of the uh, first people to get access. And I remember there was this, there was this very, very novel sort of idea. I mean, you know, we've had GPT-2 before, uh, but, but the gap between GPT-2 and GPT-3 was so huge that it was just like yeah. a completely paradigm shift, like completely sure. different experience, sure. right? So you could say that the idea of giving a model some text and having it continue uh, was like a brand new idea. And I remember when I, uh, first started playing around with GPT-3. Um, like for me, it was it was completely amazing, and I was hundred percent sure that like this is going to like change the tech world over the next few years. Um, obviously, uh, in the very early days, our idea to build AI assistance was a bit um, controversial, I would say, uh, simply because the models weren't uh, performing uh, as well as they are today. They were slow and very expensive. Um, so, uh, I remember, um, when we were doing some first customer demos back in 2020, um, we knew that now we're talking about something like, I don't know, short conversation might cost a dollar, right? It's, it's, it's completely unfeasible. Um, but we kind of had this big bag bet that, um, there will be huge advances in the models themselves. There'll be a huge competition and the prices will just go down. Uh, which is exactly what we see. And if we compare, you know, GPT 3.5 turbo, turbo in terms of how cheap and how fast it is, it's it's absolutely amazing what the progress has been. Um, and this idea of creating AI assistants that can, you know, use several uh, several calls to several LMs um, uh, to generate one response, this idea became, you know, very much plausible and very much uh, within budgets of, of typical projects. Um, so, so a lot has changed. Obviously, uh, the whole tech world sort of shifted towards generative AI solutions, which, um, you know, which, which kind of, uh, caused the usual thing where now every problem is being solved with, with generative AI. So, um, actually I, I feel like these days we have very few startups that, okay, maybe not very few, but, but, um, it's, it's not as common to start with a, with a problem. Um, but they usually start with. I want to use GPT-4 and now let me find a problem that I can solve with that. Um, that's, that's obviously very, very typical, but it leads to, to many, um, you know, interesting situations like, for example, something I mentioned before, which is the focus on, uh, the most flashy demo, the, um, the product that's easiest to, to set up, to start with, but, uh, there's much less, um, attention paid to what happens in the long run. How do I let businesses optimize for the years to come, how do I make sure that my solution is is viable over you know thousands of of interactions and so on? But that's you know that's that's always been like that with with new exciting technology. Yeah, you mentioned there in the beginning uh, when you got access to GPT three for the first time in twenty twenty that it was expensive and it was slow. But one other thing that you that I think was a huge issue until GPT four was released uh, in early twenty twenty three. Uh, was hallucinations. They were a big problem before, right? That That is true. Uh, I mean, we internally have been working on a, on a number of uh, solutions to to try to remedy that. So I think if you're using, if you're interacting with LLMs via a platform like QuickChat, you've felt that hallucinations have been sort of less of a problem over time. Um, yeah, but it is true that if you're using uh, models just like that, then then obviously you can tell that that's been a huge focus um, uh, within the OpenAI team and and other competitors, um, and yeah, so so models become uh, more and more usable um, in a sort of vanilla uh, vanilla way, right? That for example, ChatGPT you can use as is, and uh, you know millions of people use it, find it extremely useful. So that's yeah, that's that's obviously hats off to the OpenAI team in general and the ML community.